Hey guys, Joyrag here. It's difficult to talk about political extremism without using a few YouTube no-no words. In order to keep ads on this video, I'm going to use coded language to hint at ideas instead of outright stating them. That's right, YouTube. I'm playing your game. You want me to dog whistle? I'll dog whistle. You know that culturally far right-wing ideology that advocates for the state-backed physical removal of certain groups of people from, you know, something that's typically like a country? Uh, we're, we're not gonna, we're not gonna call it by its name, we're, we're gonna call it Bundle of Sticksism. Cause you know, that's their, that's their logo, it's a bundle of sticks. Wow YouTube, you guys sure are bundles of sticks, love ya, stay terrifyingly huge. Weird, it's almost like censoring specific words independent of context creates a culture of fear around that idea and makes the idea itself a protected class. Making the people who believe in the idea forced to live in an echo chamber of their own beliefs where they use coded language to get around algorithms like this. Also I'm gonna call this word this word, and this word this word. So in my last video covering political ideologies, I thought that I had got most of them, but turns out I didn't even scratch the surface, so we're going in for round two. Quick reminder, there's four axes that somebody can be an extremist in. The first spectrum is economic left versus economic right. The second spectrum is cultural left versus cultural right. The third spectrum is no state versus a totalitarian state. And the fourth spectrum is the autism, the, the, the wacky spectrum. I also made a lot of generalizations in my last video, so I'm gonna correct a few mistakes that I made before I make a lot more of them. A lot of people were mad that I quoted Wikipedia articles because Wikipedia isn't a reliable source of information. Well, that's almost a good point, but if if you had done a little bit more research, you would have found that this Wikipedia article right here states that if you don't think Wikipedia, which is diligently edited by an army of nerds every single day, isn't a credible source of information, then you can just go. Get out of here, loser. Alright, now we can get into the ideologies. Mutualism. What? No, it's not money. It's, 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 it's labor coins. I trade you three labor coins for your milk. Ha, <laughs> capitalism destroyed. Mutualism is based off the labor theory of value, which is to say that all prices of everything has to do with the amount of work somebody put into them. That's where value comes from, labor. That sounds like a good idea until you realize that some let's play slap together in 10 minutes is gonna get 10 times the amount of views as this video. The Dark Enlightenment. The Dark Enlightenment thinks the Enlightenment was a bad idea. As you can guess, they're very anti-progressive and they are viewed as kind of the precursor to all right thought, or at least their more theoretical, more philosophical version. The main difference is that while the alt-right is a disparate group composed of many different factions, um, the Dark Enlightenment is more uh, centralized around a group of thinkers. They're also not as anti-Semitic. <laughs> Jewish can't seeism. Before a certain German dictator was elected, uh, there was a group of Jews who supported him. Um, because they thought that all of his talk about killing them, that was just riling up his base. Spoilers! It wasn't! They were opposed to Zionism and they wanted to integrate with Germany. They would often ironically chant, Down with us! Down with us! Uh, cause they thought nothing bad was gonna happen to them. Whoopsie! Oopsie doopsie! They're all dead. Maoism. It's communism with Chinese characteristics. Juche. Communism with wacky characteristics. <laughs> Love ya, Supreme Leader. Zionism. For some reason, people really wanted me to talk about Zionism. Um, I'm not really sure why, um, but yeah, essentially, the, the topic itself is so divided, it's difficult to actually productively add to the discourse about it in any way, so I, I'm just gonna say, uh, Yom Kippur! Hoppians. In my last video, I talked about how anarcho-capitalists can be either culturally left-wing or culturally right-wing. A classical liberal, for example, might be pro-choice because they think that the government shouldn't be interfering with a woman's body. But a paleo-libertarian might be specifically pro-life. That might seem contradictory, but a paleo-libertarian uh, would argue that you need to preserve the culture that libertarianism exists in uh, in order for libertarianism to keep functioning. Just as liberalism taken to the extreme is anarcho-capitalism, paleo-libertarianism taken to the extreme is paleo-libertarian anarcho-capitalism, or just call it Hoppian. It's named after um, the founder of its thought, which is Hans Hermann Hopp. Hippity hoppity, gays get off my property. Jingoism, jingoism, it's nationalism but violent. Wait, let me rephrase that. Jingoism, it's nationalism. Absolutists, 
Absolutists, also called absolute monarchists, are the most extreme form of monarchy. While most monarchists advocate for a constitutional form of monarchy, where the king and queen are still kept in check by certain customs and laws, absolute monarchy says, screw all that, the king can do whatever they want, um, irregardless of customs, rules, or um, things that the constitution thinks that you should do. If monarchists are inbred, absolutists died in the womb. State capitalism. Libertarians believe that it's impossible for free trade to exist while a strong state also exists alongside it. China says, the trade's free, the people aren't. Green anarchism. Hey guys, can you recycle your Molotovs after you throw them through bank windows? Thanks. Monarcho-communism. Alt-Buddhism. Islamo-bundle of sticksism. If you look at the ideological underpinnings of radical Islam, it's actually very similar to white national Homo-bundle of sticksism. This should not be. This should not be! Syndicalism. I don't get it. Guild socialism. I really don't get it. Corporatism. This this all kind of sounds like old and irrelevant. De Leonism. How is how is any of these ideologies relevant to the 21st century at all? National syndicalism. Why am I disseminating this information? If I've never heard of it once, what relevance does it have to the modern day? Is that what I've become as a YouTuber. Sorellian as a person, just someone who reads Wikipedia articles. Pre-Marxist socialist. Disseminates them to hot takes. It's not relevant. Neo-corporatism. What I do is not relevant. Jitterness. None of this is relevant. Marxist corporatism. None of this is fucking relevant. Neo-crypto-syndicalism with Chinese ah! corporatist characteristics. Anarcho-syndicalism. Now we're talking! Anarcho-syndicalists think workers across the world should form a union and overthrow the government. They're very similar to anarcho-communists, which is why they've got the same flag. They've got the same flag, because both of them are fever dreams. <laughs> now before we go any further, I want you to know that it's possible to modify any of these ideologies with a couple of prefixes that make the ideology way cooler. Anarcho is of course one of these prefixes, just meaning uh, whatever that version of the ideology is, but anarchist. Crypto is a prefix that means the person with this ideology is hiding their power level. You could call someone who claims to be an extremist, but is actually secretly a centrist, a crypto-centrist, for example. Because Bundle of Sticksism isn't the most well-accepted ideology, uh, you'll see a lot of people being crypto-bundle of Sticksists in order to save their reputation. Proto means that the person is one link in the chain before the ideology that they're modifying. So, for example, a proto-Marxist would be the ideas and cultural movements before Marxism that led to the ideology being created. Same with proto-bundle of sticksism. Neo is a prefix meaning new, often updated for the modern day. For example, neoliberalism is liberalism, but updated for the modern day. Which means that it's a fucking late capitalist hellscape. These bloody post-neo-proto-Marxists! Speaking of which, post implies a close connection to the cultural movement of postmodernism. I have a lot to say about postmodernism, but it's probably another video, so for now, let's just move into the political philosophies that postmodernism helped inspire. And that brings us to post left, post leftism. Post leftists are leftists with nihilism and depression. Let me rephrase that. Post-leftists are leftists with more nihilism and depression than you would normally expect from a leftist. The post-left has lost their faith in leftism as a means of organization. While they are anarchists, they're actually called contemporary anarchists. They reject traditional leftist praxis. They seek to dismantle the connection between leftism and anarchism, kind of bringing anarchism back to its individualist roots. They're pretty critical of identity politics. I wonder why. Here's, here's some pictures of its founders, like... I don't know, could be, could be any reason, really. The post-left thinks that the left gets caught up in academic theories so thick and dense that nobody knows what the fuck you're talking about. That they spend all of their time infighting and arguing, and that their arguments lack a base kind of appeal. And, uh... Yeah. But post-leftists are also just kind of dicks that criticize everything. Wait a second. I'll talk about two subcategories of post-leftism to get a little more granular. Anarcho-nihilism and anarcho-egoism. Anarcho-nihilism. Anarcho-nihilists emerge from the Russian nihilism movement. Why do the Russians always have the wackiest ideologies? They reject all forms of belief, authority, and even other kinds of anarchism. In theory, they represent a uniquely anarchist critique of the moral code. In practice, they're too depressed to do anything, ever. So they just complain and whine. They're nihilists! It comes with the territory, but hey, at at least their ideology sounds cool. Don't call yourself an anarcho-nihilist if you believe in anarchy or nihilism. Anarcho-nihilists believe that 
We're doomed. We're fucked. The world is headed towards catastrophe. And as a result, uh, they kind of don't even really believe in anarchy. Contained within the ideology is the negation of the ideology. Incredible. Some quick advice for anarcho-nihilists, uh, pop some antidepressants and grab a Molotov. It's really not hard. Anarcho-egoism. Anarcho-egoism is inspired by the works of this guy called Max Stirner. Stirner is the founder of an ideology called Individualist Anarchism, also called Anarcho-egoism. This brand of anarchism rejects any sense of morality and just focuses on the individual. He said that the individual was being kept in line by these abstract social concepts he called spooks. Spooks, or ghosts in the mind, made people behave in ways that they wouldn't otherwise behave. Society? Just a spook, man. The government? A spook. Property rights? That's a spookity spook. Oh shit, I'm in $12,000 of debt. Just a spook. The only solution to the spooks is to bring him down. Is it just me or does that sound like a racial slur? But wait, isn't anarchy a spook too? No. Accelerationism. Accelerationists know that neoliberalism isn't working. However, their approach to solving the problem is quite different from communists or bundle of sixists. They think that capitalism shouldn't be overcome. Instead, it should be accelerated. You see, capitalism isn't leading us down a very good path right now. So why not just accelerate the progress of capitalism until it reaches its natural conclusion, which is to say, Collapse. Accelerationism started off as a radical far right wing ideology. For example, you could be a accelerationist libertarian who wants capitalism to progress until the point of anarcho capitalism. A bundle of sixist accelerationists might think that by exaggerating the globalizing effects of neoliberalism, eventually the people who are being replaced will be like, oh, geez, what's going on here? And lead a righteous revolt against their invaders. So that's accelerationism on the right, but Karl Marx actually said this which is accelerationist. Leftist accelerationism says if we give more power to capitalism and free trade, that will exaggerate the difference between the bourgeoisie and the proletariat. And the proletariat will then have a workers' revolt against the bourgeoisie, and boom, communism. Another way to look at it, here's a political triangle. As a neoliberal society, we are here. But if we accelerate neoliberalism to its natural conclusion, we get to this point, which is anarcho-capitalism. But anarcho-capitalism doesn't exist, so it will get pulled either towards bundle of sticksism or communism settling down in a more statist, stable ideology. Either communism or bundle of sticksism. It's all so clear to me now. We'll fight capitalism by giving it more power. That alone the libs. Now you may notice that most, if not all of the ideologies I just listed were ideologies that were formed in the 20th century or sometimes even before that. That is to say, none of them came about in the 21st century. None of them were created to specifically address the very specific social concerns that we have today because they were not created by somebody who could have predicted those concerns. I am of the opinion that modern day political philosophies should be built from the ground up to suit the needs of our time. The extremist writings of a hundred years ago are good frameworks, but they need to be adapted to the modern day in order to have any real utility. That's why I think it's important that we learn about these ideologies to get frameworks for how to build new ideologies in order to combat the problems of our time. Now I get a lot of critics telling me that anti-centrism is just centrism with ex extra steps. That if you believe in all the extremes of all political spectrums simultaneously, then you just average out to be a centrist. Now to that criticism, I say, I understand why you might think that. Um, and I would really like to send you a, uh, a letter uh, explaining um, uh, my side of the story. So if you could just send me your full name and address, I'll keep it handy. Centrism is a non-ideology because centrism by definition is the status quo. And what's the opposite of a non-ideology? That's right, a bunch of different ideologies just smashed together with a bunch of prefixes and with Western characteristics on the end. That's why I've decided to reveal to you my true political ideology. Now, anti-centrism is my political ideology, that's what I believe, yes, but the framework is a little more granular than that, and I think by telling you that, it will kind of reveal the biases that I've been putting into this video, the biases that have informed basically all of my work up until this point. It's been really difficult living with this ideology and having nobody that 
really understood me. They told me dumb shit like the whole point of a political philosophy is to find other like-minded people who believe that exact same philosophy so you can affect social change. Some, some bullshit like that. They told me making my political philosophy into a meaningless word salad only serves to make me feel special and divide me from others. But now, I found a group of people I can be truly honest with. And honestly, I'm a post-left new accelerationist with crypto nihilist tendencies and western characteristics. And I'm so glad I finally found someone I could tell that to. Accelerate! 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 We'll end up there anyway! Accelerate! Accelerate! I'm tired of waiting. Let's start accelerating faster. I don't know if we're gonna be fascist or commie. Go but I'm getting kind of tired of being a neoliberal zombie. Go faster. I would rather have my exact opposite than neutrality. Go the end faster. times are inevitable, so bring on the fatalities. I'm disaffected and always pissed. The status quo can suck a dick. Let's eat minorities and kill the rich. Cause I'm an accelerationist. I got one thing on my wish list to get outside of this hell pit. The way we're living just doesn't work. So let's just fucking go berserk. Class war now, race war now Honestly, I just want a fucking war Let's wreck this shit, let's wreck this shit Let's just fucking wreck all this We're all trapped in this liberal hell Left or right would both be swell I take anarchy at this point At least the end comes from good joints The only way out is through I know exactly what to do Here's the solution to be a fire starter We'll get capitalism to fuck us harder We're headed towards collapse So let's get on with this crap We're all fucking doomed and I'm ready to go Let's get this fucking show on the road Accelerate! 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 Faster, damn it! Faster! Marx was smart. Nick Land is right. The invisible hand of the market is fisting us at night. It's clear we're headed towards collapse I'm so on edge I can't relax I hate waiting for societal decay Set the dial to 11 and blow it all away Society will fall to its knees And then we'll rebuild perfectly In whatever way happens to conveniently Match my exact political philosophy Accelerate 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 Accelerate, we'll end up there anyway. Accelerate, accelerate. I'm tired of waiting. Let's start accelerating faster. I don't know how the world will turn Go out. Faster. I just want it all to come crashing Go down. Faster. If it doesn't happen, I'll be disappointed. Even Modern life is so boring. Give me that post-scarcity fascism, Nick Land. Give me those robot legs. Give me those robot hands. We'll beat capitalism with capitalism. What could go wrong? I made this for you, Nick Land. This is your song. DM me, Nick Land. Seriously, this isn't a joke anymore. Fucking DM me. You're ignoring my emails, and I, 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 I'm personally offended by it. Nick Land, I want to talk. I want to have a, a, an intellectual conversation with the creator of the, with the dark enlightenment. Please get back to me, Nick Land.